This video is best viewed at 720p HD and full screen. In addition, you should have watched the A-axis and B-axis tutorial videos before coming to this point. So here we need to go back to the A-axis. We are in tomogram combination. And there are a few steps we have to set up. First, we have to know that we want to match the B tomogram to the A tomogram. This is almost always the case. Next, we want to know where our fiducials are placed, and in this case the fiducials are on both sides. It's critical that you do not mess up this step because if they really are on one side but you say both sides, you won't get a good combine. So you must get this correct. Now we can move up to the bottom half of the page. Here we want to use the default and medium patches and there's a buffer built in in the X and Y min and max edges of the tomogram but the Z axis we need to choose ourselves. And to do that we will open the A volume, the one being matched to, and move it down to the Z where we see information of the cell which was is around 22 on that surface and then this surface is 129. So we're going to fill in the z-axis minimum and maximums, create our combine scripts and start combine. Now this process happens very quickly so I'm just going to pause here and explain that here the initial match uh, will happen quite fast and then it will quickly go to the final match. The initial match is if it, there's a failure can easily be fixed. In this case it will not fail. So now we're going to the starting match or final match and just to show you what the bottom half of the page looks like we'll watch the top to see how it goes. Here I've just sort of sped up the vol combine so you didn't have to watch it go for another 30 seconds or so. And it's finished that part of it but now it needs to reassemble all the little volumes together and fill in any gray areas and then it's finished. So now we can open the combined volume. Here you'll see the tomogram itself on the sort of right and top edges that's where it's single axis where the A and B axes didn't match quite right and in the middle there is where it's more like a dual axis. So everything looks good. We can say done. And now we need to trim the volume in X, Y, and Z. Here we're going to keep all of the X, Y information, but we're going to trim in Z. So I'll go down till I see the spot where I want to trim off. So I'm going to start at Z equals 21. And then to the top surface and end with Z equals 128. So I'll fill in this as 128. And now I have to do scaling. So here I'm going to use what we call the rubber band tool. And this allows us to select sub areas in the zap window. So I just click on that. And then if I middle click and drag, I can make a box. And I make it on top of the cellular material. And then using the slider, select a Z where I'm inside the cell. That's my high. And then go down. But I don't want to get any gold in the image. I just want cellular material. So that's my low. And I'm going to select that as my sub area for scaling. If you get gold in there, it will totally mess up your contrast. So now we can trim the volume. It's already finished. Open the trimmed volume. And we'll, as we move it through, we see we have very nice contrast. And it's trimmed down the volume in the Z that we don't want. So now we can archive original stacks. This allows us to get rid of extra material that we don't need. So for example, here what happens is, is that you have an original .st that was saved. That original .st contains all of the x-ray information. But we've been using the one that has been 
x-rays have been removed. And so we don't need to keep two complete stacks. So what this program does is allows us to take all that x-ray information and put it into a small file that's only 0.26 megabytes. And if we really wanted to, we could take those x-rays and throw it back on our x-ray array stack so that we get our x-rays back. So this makes it so we can just go ahead and delete the original stack that has all the x-rays on it but the x-ray information will be saved inside this little file in case we ever need it again. So that was the a-axis, now we do the b-axis. Now we can see that our directory is about 2.2 gigs and so we can delete all of these intermediate files that we no longer need. So these are all sorts of backup files and previous version files and files that are easy to make. So we can delete all of them and you'll see that now we're down to 383 megabytes. This is important when you want to archive all your data. And we're done. That's the end of Combine. And you've completely now made an entire tomogram.